Hope everyone is doing well wherever you are. And that those who are in the cold and snow that you're doing well. Uh, and the rest of you are all as doing as well as, as um, you can be today. So today is going to be a great day. I've got the uh, quilt pattern up on the screen. I want you to take a look at the bottom right hand corner because that's where we're going to be concentrating our time today on the spool block. And good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Laverne. Thanks for popping in and saying hello. And so we are going to be doing those four little spool patterns on the bottom right hand side today. So if you have your, your book, uh, grab that. I'm gonna pop this down and say good morning again and again as always questions concerns um, comments helpful hints all of that please put it into the chat box and that way as the morning progresses we'll we'll have a chance to take a look at it so let's jump right in and get busy with that if you have your book i'd like you to turn to page 30 with me and on page 30 is that particular block they're showing how to work at the hand sewing of you know seams that are inset and that's what we're really going to work on today and and what i want to also share with you is that if you are doing a combination of hand piecing as well as machine piecing this is a great block to uh, really get into the hand piecing because i think you'll probably even find it a little bit easier to do the the hand piecing as opposed to the machine and I want to share with you as I was prepping for today and, and sewing a couple of blocks and, and that type of thing, you know, an, an easy mistake that's made and, and I left it so that um, you, could, you could see it and know what I was talking about. So let's drop down to my book and let's take a look at page 30. So I just want to take you through the steps. Um, along with what they've, you know, they're they're talking about here, and then I'll sew it with you. So we're going to sew the center piece in first, uh, both left and right sides, and then we're going to move to the background fabric and fill, you know, one of the sides in, starting at uh, the top right hand side, moving down, and then. Um, as we get over here, we'll uh, stop at that point. We're going to sew across here, all right? And then we'll stop again at that quarter inch seam, and then we'll um, sew up from, and we'll sew across, and then as you can see here, we'll take it from there and sew up to the point on the other side, and we will have uh, that one complete and we'll do exactly the same thing to the other side. So we're gonna work on the hand piecing again today a little bit with this block. And if you have your book close at hand, that would be probably helpful to you as we, as we move through this. Now I wanna share something with you. On this one, I was practicing, you know, my uh, sewing it in and how that, how that works. And I want to show you a little bit of what happened. I wasn't paying close attention. Um, excuse me for just a minute. Yeah, because mine is, is still counting off and it says I'm live.
I don't either. Why don't you give John a call and I'll, and I'll, okay. Yeah, and I'll give you a call back. Okay, bye. It looks like we're having some uh, technical difficulties, and so I want to um, stop right here. And we're we're gonna we're gonna make a phone call, and we're gonna see what's going on here. And Could somebody answer in the uh, chat room if I am still on with the rest of you? Uh, I see Barbara says I'm. Uh, you're fine here. Okay, so this was kind of confusing. So I'm just going to keep going and keep talking, and we'll see what happens from the other end of that. And I'll and I'll talk with um, Kristen probably by phone and stuff as we as we go. So let's go back to what I was saying here with this. Thank you everyone so much for answering. Um, move my hand. No problems here. Okay, so I'm gonna so back to this. I was practicing my sewing into this seam line, and when I was finished. I noticed this right here because I worked very hard to get those stripes going the right way and to be even and so when I was done I noticed that this side was fine but this was not so again the first thing that that I did was go back and I measured uh, my piece it was cut correctly I looked at and measured my quarter inch seams. They were right on. So then the third thing I looked at was my pressing. And I'm not sure exactly what I did, but I did not press this well. And if you look, I don't know that you can see it online, but I have a uh, crease in here that overlaps. So I evidently did not press against my seam line and I pressed a wrinkle into my block, which, you know, is not a wise, um, is really not a wise thing. So I am gonna have to take that out and re-sew it uh, and repress it again because this is not even and I'm a full eighth of an inch off. So it, was, it the wrinkle doesn't it doesn't look very big at first, but it's a sixteenth of an inch in this way and a sixteenth of an inch or a little bit more that way. And so you can see as I start to press it out, um, it straightens up. So again, when you have issues, go back to those three items again, and the. Uh, you know, first check your, your cutting. Um, see if you actually cut the, the piece of fabric to the correct size, and then check your quarter inch seams, and then press your ironing. And for me here, it was the, the ironing. I will show you um, and talk it through with you about the pressing of these blocks as well as how to sew them in by machine for those who cannot or do not wish to do the hand piecing. So whether you are working with the hand piecing or with machine piecing, you are going to need to mark your blocks. And let's take a, take a quick look at that for, for a second. Um, the glare of the, um, the camera is making that a little bit hard to see. Normally, they tell you to, you know, to mark and make a, a point, you know, where it, where it crosses at your quarter inch seam line. I just make the, the line go completely through when I start to measure and work at that. So I will simply put my ruler at the quarter inch mark and I will run a line you know through through that and because I'm going to be doing hand piecing I just made the line go completely through so that I had 
you know, that line that there so that I could um, sew on that quarter inch seam line. I do the same again. I put my quarter inch down. I'll move it across. For me, having that line going across as opposed to a dot there, uh, because my pencil, you know, working that way is always a little bit bigger. Um, and I, you know, it's like, my question is, do I stop in the middle of that circle, which is probably the truth, or do I go just past it? Where in that circle do I connect? But here I know exactly because my line uh, crosses right there. So hopefully you could see that on the um, video. And now I, I'm going to take this block. We're going to do the hand stitching. And I have my two pieces here that we'll sew together. I'm not, I'm not totally crazy about my choices that I made um, on this. The, the trouble with this one, um, both of these, is that it's very difficult to see where the seam lines stop and end. And I have my white um, sew line pencil. And make sure that when you are marking, if you have a dark fabric like I do here, that you um, make sure that these quarter inch lines are sitting against the side of the fabric because the, the um, lead in the pencil takes up some space. So I'm gonna take and, as I always would, I'm going to mark that completely across on that side and I will do the same for this side as well. Give myself a little bit of space here. You know, and the, the yellow pen, pencil also works well for those. All right. And so we have those going um, that direction. And I want to know where my quarter inch seam is for the other side. And so this is where that pencil mark is very helpful coming this way so that it crosses there. And I know exactly where to cross those those lines. All right. So I'm taking a little bit of time to do this with you um, according to some questions and uh, concerns. All right. So now I have everything marked. I have my two pieces. And I want to, um, no, I do not have everything marked. I do, I did not mark this side. Bear with me. Got a little befuddled with the, uh, so I can, I can see that, that mark that being on the yellow flower didn't help. All right, so I have everything marked. Now we can get started. All right, so I have my centerpiece, you know, right sides together. And I want to make note that when you are putting these right sides together, that you will have, and, and again, I, I hope that you can see this on the the screen is that you have a, a small little triangle on both sides and you are supposed to have that. That is um, part of the, um, when we turn it and keeping the quarter inch seam line. I'm gonna drop a couple pins in simply because this is, you know, as you're, as you're working with, with hand stitching, you know, things slip around and those pins or using the magnets, whatever it is that is most helpful to you. So I have my thread and needle and I'm gonna come up right in 
my seam line a little bit away from the edge um, quarter inch because we always start and do it do a back stitch so I'm going to do a couple of back stitches here so I'm going to go forward again and now I can back stitch right into where those two lines cross and then I can start moving forward um, stitching across That's about as far as I totally feel comfortable with. Then I'm going to go take a back stitch to hold those threads in place. It's kind of like, you know, doing an extra knot or or whatever there. And again, I am going to come up right in that spot where those lines cross again. That's my quarter inch seam. And then I'm going to take um, a back, couple of back stitches right there. And again, just so that I have, I can lock that in place before I knot that, that off. All right. And because I'm using, you know, a fine um, thread, and then I can snip that. And again, we're not going to be doing our pressing at this point. And we're going to put the other side on right sides together and again you want to keep those um, little um, triangles about the you know the same size through that again I'm going to pin that and of course when you're doing this not on camera um, generally speaking, I can go a little bit quicker. I am going to knot my thread again. And uh, someone asked if I would show that quilter's knot again. I simply put that the end of my thread, let me find a place where you might be able to see this a little bit better, over my finger. And then I wrap it a couple of times around the pin grab it with my thumb and pointer finger and then just simply um, pull it down um, to the end and I have my quilters knot. All right. And once again, we're gonna start just a little bit before that beyond where the, the seams cross. I'm gonna take a couple of back stitches going right in where those two, um, my two marking lines went. And then I move along. And I'm kind of sewing around those two pins. And sometimes, don't you love it? Um, kind of gets a little bit knotted up there. And this one may be more knotted. I'm not sure I see the knot, but something has happened with my sewing. I don't see a knot, but it's not wanting to move through it. So I am going to cut it and stop messing with it so that you don't have to watch me in the struggle. I'm not sure what happened there. Let me re. This is a good time to ask questions if you have any.
Well, if nothing else, you see that, um, you know, your hand stitching um, stays in very well. All right. Okay, again, starting a couple of stitches away. Going back. All right, let's try this again. Take my stitches. And each time that I stop, I will go back, I will take a back stitch before I move on, which locks in the threads and gives it a little bit more stability as I'm moving across the piece. And now as I come up to where these two cross, I'm going to come directly up into that seam line. And then I'm going to go back a couple of stitches again and lock that in place. And I will remove those pins, knot it, Thank you guys for your patience today. Really appreciate that. Um, and before I, I move on to the next part, I want to um, check with Kristen here and see if all is good from where she's sitting. And uh, no comment from her, so I think we're still good. And we have our two sides on at this point. And now you can see that we have, you know, that, that quarter inch seam on both sides. We have that uh, that we need to work that. So now we're going to put these sides, um, these sides in. Uh, starting with right sides together, we're going to, uh, I'm going to start on, I think, the right side uh, with putting... those in. Again, you don't want to press at this point in time. And I'm going to drop a couple of pins in. All right. Today, I'm starting to feel like I am a little bit all thumbs. So a little bit below. Let's see if I can speed this up a little bit for you guys. Get my, you know, my um, couple of back stitches in there. And another thing that I would like to mention that uh, someone mentioned to me is that they um, have been also using the um, acorn glue and they have sat um, you know, put a drop of that acorn glue in the corners as they were hand stitching, and that helped them not have to use um, the pins uh, so much. And I thought that was a great idea. So if you you know you didn't want to put the pins in, that would be another way to um, to work your your hand stitching. So I'm going to run my hand stitching completely. So I took my two back stitches at the beginning 
Now I'm going to take another little back stitch. And keep moving. And my stitches are, they're, they're about an eighth of an inch apart, uh, maybe a little bit more. So I'm going to go up and I want to take a stitch right in there and I am holding the back side down this way. So as I take that back stitch, I want to now come up on the other side of that seam line. All right. And then we are going to now turn this so that it is moving down this side and again we have those little um, because I have held this right here and now I want to move that seam line out of my way all right we've got it held up here I am pinning this to this side because we're gonna go straight across on this. So let me um, finish straightening that out and pinning it so that when we get to the other side, and again, push your needle straight down and come across, all right? And I have come up on the other side of that quarter inch. So now I can go directly into, with this held up, I'm on this side of it, and now I'm going to go down, and I'm coming up on the other side, taking my first stitch, then I'm going to back stitch directly into that, keeping my seam out of the way. And now I can move forward with my stitching. All right. Going across. And generally speaking, I could probably go all the way the, across, but I want to. So now, again, I'm keeping this side. Um, I'm holding it away as I come up into that uh, piece and I'm going to go straight in and come up on the other side of that piece and now again I'm turning that so it works its way getting those pinned And now coming back up, right where those two meet, where I went down from the other side, so my seam line is open, um, I'm going to take a stitch, and I just lost my thread, so I, I took a back, I'm taking a stitch, I'll go back and do the back stitch again, and then I just want to share with you from the front side that this is what you'll have. All right, so it is sewn directly across. It's down, these corners come out really, really well. Um, it looks great in terms of that. Without uh, me rethreading and sewing back up that other side, how are you all doing with that? Do you have any questions on that? And then I wanna go back to this one 
and basically share with you that we're going to sew it by machine in exactly the same way. So I will start at the point and because this this fabric is very light um, it's got a little bit of a silky feel to it which is kind of nice and then I'm going to take you to the machine and remember I, I've shared with you that if you lay the needle just lay the fabric right where the needle comes. Make sure I have that straight. I am going to sew down two um, that point. All right, now I can uh, either back stitch and trim it off but I have found that it works pretty well if I use my stiletto which I don't have laying right here which is very unusual for me I can turn that with my needle in and now I'm going to sew to this side and again stop right there at right in that corner where those two come in and you know it, it would probably be a good thing to stop there um, if you haven't done this before and I think that I'm going to on this one and uh, so I think I need to uh, So you can see that the points come right in there where they're supposed to. And now I'm going to turn this one. And it wasn't turning real well for me underneath of the machine. And the reason why is that it got a thread caught right there. So I'm going to remove that thread. And now I'll get this back. Actually, it was two threads. So you can see that mistakes do happen. There we go. And, I, you know, again, that probably wouldn't happen if... Um, you stopped all the way, you know, right there where the, the two come together. So I'm going to run that up again a little bit on that side. So it stays put and in place. All right. So you can see where the, the sewing comes in it works there and here when you stop at that point and you press it and you're going to press this in okay so these two come in oops i am so sorry all right so these two are pressed in and these two are pressed out and you can see that we come i came up and so to that where that crosses there sew it over here to and stopped where that crosses and then you'll pin and go up the other side i want to look for questions at this point in the chat box let me see what we've got going on here if you have any questions um happy yeah happy halloween Yeah, thank you guys for, you know, noticing that I was still live, and uh, that was all good. All right. The white marking pencils, yeah, for those of you who um, 
are wondering about those, those can be purchased again in the store. And Kristen has left a, um, a link for you. All right. That then will be what you will do to make these blocks and the, the hand. And Laverne, you're right. It can be a little bit of a challenge, but I don't think it, it should be, you know, uh, and this one I pressed in correctly the first time and I pressed it open. Uh, I was doing, uh, trying another method of sewing it. I'm not sure I like this uh, method with that. So again, I'm going to encourage you to follow in the book because it makes for a better closing that you press these in, press um, these down like this and you will have your piece. So again, when you mark, just to, you know, kind of reiterate what I what I have shared today and thank you all, all 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 for your patience with this morning. Again, I cross the lines so that I can stop there and you, again, if you're hand stitching, start in there, back stitch and then go forward and almost with this block, it's it's really almost easier to hand stitch it. So if you're going to try both, I would recommend that this would be one of those blocks where you would um, hand stitch both of those. Any other questions? Um, Lynn, uh, it's a, in the corners of my spool blocks that I'm sewing by hand. Should I send them all the way to the end of the seam if I'm going to sew them in all together with the machine? Um, no, you stop at, at that point again. If I understand what you're asking, both um, hand stitching, uh, you would stop at the quarter inch seam at the end, but with the sewing machine, sew all the way through. and if that's what you're asking about the outside corners, you would sew all the way if you're doing it by machine. And um, so as you can see, that's that's exactly what I did there. But if you're doing it by hand, you would stop at your quarter inch seam line and uh, not sew all the way through. Even though if you did sew all the way through, if you are doing a combination, it might be okay because you wouldn't need that open space for your hand stitching if you were going to sew in. Um, but if I'm doing a hybrid, should I sew them all the way out? Uh, yeah, go ahead and sew them all the way out. And then if the next block next to it, you're going to do hand stitching, it would be easy to remove a couple of stitches. So I think if I understand your question correctly, um, that's what you would do. So when I machine sew it, if I'm machine sewing, I sew all the way to the ends on the outside, um, stopping here, you have to stop in here. And if I'm doing hand sewing to the outside edge, I start at the start and stop at the quarter inch. All right. Um, and then I'm going to remove this one and take care of that pressing issue. And we're all done with that. Any other questions from anyone? Um, and again, if you still have a question, here, my um, email address is right there on the screen. Please feel free. Um, to uh, use it and contact me if you um, need that. So thank you, thank you so much for all of this. I appreciate your patience today and we will see you next week and we'll continue with our blocks and uh, they will announce it on the quilt show. I think the next block that we have, if, as I'm looking in the book, um, is called is the Amish star so we'll be working on the Amish star next week and that's another um, that one probably will give us a little bit of challenge um, but we only have to make one so that's the plus of that and that one is another good hand sewn one but it also can work with the sewing machine so we'll see you next week have a great one